18 and 24 says, This is the day which the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Eric Harris, where I serve as one of the ministers here at the garden where new life begins under the anointed leadership of our servant leader, Pastor Orlando C. Harris, Sr. It is such a privilege to be here today to come before you and to present you with God's word. And I'm going to give you the word, uh, the word to you, just like he gave it to me. But before we start, let's start off with a word of prayer. Dear Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day, Lord God. Thank you for your many blessings, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that as I bring this message, Lord God, that uh, your will be done, Lord God. Decrease me, Lord God, so that you may increase, Lord God. And I just pray that your word will be a blessing to one or someone out there, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, and I ask this prayer in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. The title of my message today is Unqualified, Unworthy. Unqualified, unworthy. Let me give you the definition of those two words. To be unqualified means not fit. You don't have what it takes to complete a task or to get a job done. Unworthy, lacking in excellence or value, poor, not deserving respect, admiration, or support, not deserving to be considered. I'd like to read you a little excerpt from the book that's called Unqualified. And uh, it says, how God uses broken people to do big things. And it was written by a pastor that goes by the name of um, Steve Furtick. Some of you might have heard of him. He's the lead pastor at Elevation Church, which is based in Charlotte, North Carolina. And this is a little excerpt from the book that he wrote. It says, we feel unqualified to do God's work or to live out the calling we imagine. But God has a way of using our weaknesses for good. God loves unqualified people. After all, God can't bless who you pretend to be, but he longs to bless who you really are, a flawed and broken person. God doesn't ex call the qualified. He qualifies the call. It's not about your ability. It's about your availability. If I can give you one verse or one scripture, it comes from Colossians 1 and 12 and the A part of verse 12. It says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. So it is God who qualifies us, not us. So you think that you're not un unqualified? You think that you're unworthy? Let me give you some examples of men and women that were used in the Bible who we think are great people, but they were just people, but they were not perfect. You would think that they weren't that they weren't qualified. You would think that they were unworthy. Well, look at this. Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. He can't do anything. He doesn't have the energy for it. Isaac was a daydreamer. Sometimes he'd be thinking about something and he would just be out in La La Land, think about something else, becoming distracted. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. Joseph was abused. Moses, he had a stuttering problem. Nobody can understand him. Jeremiah and Timothy were thought to be too young. David, not only was he an adulterer, but he was a murderer. Elijah was suicidal. At times, he suffered from depression. Elijah asked God to take his life. 
Yeah, I want to give you some verses. Also, we talked about being unqualified. Now let's talk about being unworthy. And I'm going to give you a, just uh, three verses concerning being unworthy. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. You know, sometimes we beat ourselves up from things that have happened in our past. You know, we may feel ashamed about it. We may feel anger. We just may feel, have not, not have good feelings about it. But remember, God will use the unworthy. He will use the unqualified. That was Isaiah 43 and 18. Another verse is Psalms 34 and 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. When you feel remorseful, where you have ex ex expressions of remorse, that, that shows that there's something in you that God can use in a good way. The third scripture is Zephaniah 3 and 17. The Lord your God is in your midst. The mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with his singing. So don't worry about it. You are worthy. You're not unworthy. In each one of us born in this world, we have something within us that God can use to do a great work. I'd like to call that something the it factor. It's just something each and every one of us on this earth has inside of him or her that God can use for his glory. As I said, I like to call it that it factor. And if you just allow yourself, if you just avail yourself to him, you'd be surprised and amazed at what just God did. You'd be saying to yourself, by God using me, is, is, is that something that I was capable of? Yes, you are capable of, but you have to avail yourself. You have to give yourself to God, give in to his will, accept what he has given to you and let him use you. You'll be amazed. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let me give you some verses about being available to God. The first one is Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear not. Fear not. For I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my right hand. So there's nothing to worry about, no need of doubting yourself. As I recall in a previous message, I believe it was spoken by our pastor, doubt the doubt. Fear not. Again, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my right hand. To God be the glory. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. And then for our other scripture, it comes from Deuteronomy 31 and 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in, in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Again, nothing to worry about. God's got your back. If you're doing his will, and you know that it is of God, nothing to worry about. You do go and do what God has called you to do. So God, in his mighty works, he will use you. If you make yourself available to him, it, it, it's just an amazing thing with great things that can be accomplished but you've got to give yourself for him. So despite how you may feel, 
no matter what your thought process is, no matter what your doubts are, no matter what your concerns are, you can be used by God. God will qualify you. God will make you worthy for his mighty works. If you have questions about exactly what it is that you need to do, exactly what it is that God has called you for, we have people here that will be more than happy if, with your questions, with your concerns. Um, if you just want to talk in general, we'll be there for you. You can call our number, our church number, which is 619-517-3591, and we will get back to you. You beloved, you are loved. You are mighty in God's eyes. You are worth it. You are qualified. God can use you if you just give yourself to him. And as we say here at the garden where new life begins, there's nothing you can do to make God stop loving you. Be blessed.